In February, we introduced you to the DNA Nudge team who developed a system combining genetic testing with lifestyle monitoring to help us make smarter food choices. During the early part of the pandemic, DNA Nudge adapted their technology to detect COVID-19. And this has already been rolled out nationwide by the United Kingdom's National Health Service. Now they're getting ready to reach a much wider public by launching their new low-cost bubble tests. Hello there, how are you? Hi, welcome to DNA Nudge. Thank you very much. So if you'd like to step into the cubicle for me. All right, in here. Have you ever done a phlegm test before? I haven't. No, you I haven't? haven't had the pleasure. So what I want you to do is I want you to try and put as much sample in there. Now what we need is we need phlegm and not spit. So phlegm will be a bit more thick and spit is quite liquidy. We want the phlegm. You see this pot here? This yep. shows you about the amount that we need. <laughs> if you are of a delicate disposition, you may want to turn your volume down now. <laughs> in fact, please turn your volume down now. This is so gross, I can't believe I'm doing this. Keep trying again. <laughs> there we go, that's a good one. <sighs> that's exactly what we need, there we go. Oh, that's a wonderful sample, yeah. Let me see. <laughs> yep. Okay. And you're all done. I'm all done, fantastic. Wonderful. Well, I feel as if my temperature has shot up by about 20 degrees. That's really, really exhausting. It's kind of a physical exercise, isn't it, Natalie? Bringing up that much sort of from deep within. That's quite harrowing. I feel like I need to go lie down now. <laughs> DNA Nudge is the brainchild of Imperial University's Regis Engineering Professor, Chris Tumazu. We differ by about 0.1%, and it's that 0.1% that differentiates us from whether we got propensities to genetic diseases, whether or not we can metabolize various foods, whether or not we can metabolize drugs, etc. etc. Okay. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify those errors. Those errors are called SNPs. They're single letter changes in our DNA, single nucleotide polymorphism. DNA is composed of nucleotides, which join together to form base pairs. Cytosine C goes with guanine G, adenine A goes with thymine T. But single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, occur when a letter in our DNA changes for another one. For example, where most people have a C, there is an A instead. If an error like this happens in a gene related to nutrition, it can cause health problems or intolerances. But when COVID came along, Professor Tomazu quickly realized that his technology could also identify other types of genetic material. The utility of the technology was absolutely spot on for rapid testing. Instead of spotting these mutations, if you like, these chemicals for these SNPs, these errors in our genetic makeup, we had to spot COVID-19 genes. Because we were looking at the RNA, not the DNA of the virus, we had to then have a, a little mixing phase, which takes the RNA and converts it into effectively DNA, so that the DNA can be amplified. We managed to do an extensive clinical trial uh, since our last discussion, we published quite a significant Lancet paper, which is a very, very well-respected journal paper. We were able to compare against all the well-known brands, and we were up there between like a sort of 94 and 98% sensitivity, and specificity was 100%. Sensitivity measures the probability of actual positives, while specificity measures the probability of actual negatives. A test that scores high in both is considered very reliable. The Department of Health were impressed and ordered 5.8 million cartridges. So this is where all the magic happens? It is, yes. This is where the serious science happens. So how many run-throughs have you had to do to make sure you were kind of secure with dealing with samples and the, your processing? So we were really lucky in the fact that we actually did a lot of our trials with the London Symphony Orchestra. Oh, nice. So they would come to us, we would do tests for up to 140 people. All the practice we did with them is what makes us super confident that it's ready for consumers. So what we're going to do now is we've got your sample and obviously we need to put it inside your personal cartridge. Yeah, so the advantage of this is the bubble test. You can test up to, is it 10 people per... Per cartridge? Yes. Per cartridge? Yes. This ability to test more than one person per cartridge is an advance on the original genetic test. 
If we find a positive within a group of 10, we can then break that down into two groups of three, a group of four, we can retest those, and then we can find the, the positive within that other group, and then keep breaking it down so that we're not using a cartridge for every single person. That helps reduce waste, but it also helps us keep that price low, and this should be affordable for everybody. And how much is it exactly? So it's £100, so if there's a group of 10 of you, that only works out at £10 each. Okay, so we're back up on the shop floor. Yes. So we're going to put your cartridge into our nudge box. Um, I've scanned it with our capsule, so it's linked this capsule with your barcode on your sample. This goes into here. Put the capsule on top. And what does the capsule do versus the cartridge? So the capsule basically links your sample with that box and makes sure that it starts. So it's all about it being registered to you personally or to your bubble. So you'll get your results within 90 minutes via email. And if it ends up being a positive result, what happens then? So the email that they get sent out will obviously inform them that they are positive. It will then give them the general NHS guidelines of what to do next. Um, also, their positive result will be sent to Public Health England um, to make them aware that a positive test has been found and they will put into place measures from track and trace to make sure that anyone who's come into contact with that person is also notified. Everything's sent from the box, everything's done in the box, so there's no human error. But with the arrival of vaccines around the world, will this sort of test still be needed? The corona will be here for a long time. Vaccine or no vaccine, it will be here. There will always be that paranoia. You know, any respiratory disease, people want to be tested for corona, either they've had the vaccine or not. So there will be a need. As you look forward to the future, what does the bigger picture look like? We know that the severity of COVID is so dependent upon your chronic conditions, your health conditions. If we can now, as a result of this, push people to eat more healthier and to look after their diet and their chronic conditions, and this is where the DNA testing then will come in, nudging people to be healthier. It's almost like using a pandemic to help an epidemic. So I have some exciting news. While we were indoors filming, my results came through via email and I'm happy to report my coronavirus test result is negative. And of course, I didn't expect that I had COVID-19 coming into the start of the day today, but it is somehow reassuring to read it, know that you're safe and head off into the rest of your day with peace of mind, which is what I'm going to do.